In this video, we'll start to explore how you can use the wonderful Chart.js library to create a very simple pie chart or donut chart and of course explore the options you have with a pie chart donut chart. So let's start with that and the first thing we need to have is of course a very standard HTML document and what I will do here is I will just give it some quick design. So first things first, get the bootstrap starter template. I'll just copy this and post, paste it in here. All right, and then I only will get this part here, the text here. I'll copy this text and I'll paste it in here in the title and of course in here. All right, so once we've got this, remove all the excess code. All right, let's save that. So that will be, all right, that works. Next part is we go to the Chart.js documentation and in here we go to getting started and we'll just copy this text here, the canvas ID or the canvas tag and we'll just put that in here and next what we want to do is we want to add the script tag and if you see here 2.4 etc well don't worry we will update this to the latest version I'll show you exactly how. So this will be below, we paste it in here, and then just remember, just check what's your current version. I know the latest version is 2.7.2, and maybe you have another one, just put it in there. All right, once we did that, we just going to copy this final part here, and we will paste this underneath here. And this will be our script tag, and the script tag will contain all of the information here all right so we have this line and then later on we will adjust that to pie or donut so we've got this now let's save this let's see if everything works all right that works so now what i will do is i'll just do some quick design first of all i'll just change the color here so it will be a nice bluish color and then next i'll just put in here so if you see my I use color coding for the difficulty of the topic and in this case this is a very straightforward process so we will say here success so it's the green color which means it's suitable for everyone including beginners so we say div class and then what I'll do is I will make the I want to make the chart right now I want to put it in the center here and make it smaller so it's easier to follow along and to see so say call md6 and then we say offset md3 so we will push it to the center and then what we can do here is um, margin uh, y yes yeah, so it means margin top bottom for bootstrap 5 means it will be a big margin between there all right so once we have that close that then what we do is we say here div class we're going to use a card so we will make a card design and then here again div class and then what we'll do here is card dash body so once you have that we have to indent the h1 and then in here we have a closing and then we open it again to add up here yes that's beautiful and then here again and then we close that we close this again so we have the card that's closed and finally we have to close the final one all right so we've got this maybe what we can do here is to make a horizontal line just it just looks nicer let's save this refresh now as you can see our our design looks very nice it's nice green color here we have some nice margin top and bottom and we have our chart here all right so let's start and work with this and I will just make this smaller as well to make this a paragraph so it will be more suitable here all right so now we've got everything we're done here let's start and explore our pie chart or pie option so we go here in our documentation we search for donut and pie so we will do what we will use is right now the donut I do like the donut chart a lot more so let's go back here to our codes here and here we have the type and we type in a donut so this is our donut chart let's Oh, let's refresh here and now you can see we have a donut chart but the colors are all consistent what we need to do is we need to give this some nice colors and if you look here in our coloring design we say background color this is an array of colors so you can see here uh, the fill color 
of the arcs in the data set. All right, so let's start and give this some nice colors. So we'll change the background color and the border color right now is not necessary, not interested in, but we can say here, we have seven labels. So we, that means we have, there should be seven items here. All right, so we can give this seven different colors. Remember the color is a string value, so I will just make this green, comma, oh, and of course, quotations, don't forget those, green, yellow, comma, orange, comma, red, comma, purple, comma, and then indigo, all right. So now we have them. Remember, this is an array, so we need to use the brackets between here. So we have all of this. Let's save this now and let's see what happens. Now we have nice, colorful items in our chart. So what we can do now is we can, for example, adjust or remove the border. You can see there's a border here between. Let's remove that. So we can play around more with that. So we say here, border color. Well, we remove the border color. But let's say border width. So we say border width. This is one of these commands here. And then we can say here, what's the width? Zero pixels. Let's save that. What happened now is now our border is disappearing. And if we go back to our uh, documentation here, you can see your border width is a number. You can control even the arcs. Every single arc could have a separate width. So let's try that as well. So you can see here. So let's make this a bracket. All right, and then we say here, zero, and I say two, four, six, eight, ten, one, or what was it, twelve, and then one. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we need only seven of those. Go back here to our pie chart or donut chart and refresh, and there you are. So you can see now it starts to increase in certain levels. As you can see now, we have all these very thick lines that are getting thicker by, the, by every new slice. All right, so now we have this. Let's play around with something more fancy. Just let's imagine you have a multi-level pie or donut chart. What does that mean? Well, very simple. You can do exactly the same, but then you have two levels. Let's make that one. All right. So we're just going to put in the new value here. We say this is the second value. And the second value, and we will remove all of this. This is not necessary. We have a border width of two by default. All right. And then we say the data set here, we just put in some fictional numbers. I'll just put in one, two. This is one. And this is again two. So you can see some differences. All right. We've got this. This is the second data set that has the same colors. But then let's change all right so now you can see we have a new type of pie chart or donut chart because now we are with a cut or with multi levels so if you want to make this a pie chart as well that's also possible it will remove the cutout space so let's refresh you can see now it will just fill up the empty spot here of course, this is not that nice. I like this one a bit more. But maybe you say, if you see this, well, this is nice, but this is very thick. Can we make it thinner? Yes, of course we can. So you have here in the config options, so for the options for the pie chart, we have the cutout percentage. By default, it's 50. And so there's a difference for donut and for pie. And that's the only difference why something is a donut chart or if it is a pie chart. Basically, the cutout percentage by default for a donut chart is 50. For pie chart, by default, it is zero. So that's why there is a hole in the donut, basically, because it cuts out 50% of it. So let's make it even thinner. Let's say the cutout percentage will not be 50% as we have here. Let's make it 80%. So what you have to do is you have to copy the cutout percentage with capital P, yes, and let's put that in our options, yes. So if we put it in our options, we say here 80% comma so we just say 80 comma then go back to our chart refresh the chart and now we have a very nice thin layer that's beautiful of course if you would add up new ones you have to really consider of course what happens because this third data set will probably have lesser space as well but it looks really fancy 
this is basically how you can do that and if you would remove the cutout percentage let's put this on zero you will see now it becomes again a normal pie chart there you are so it's a very straightforward process so now you have all of these options and you can explore a bit more regarding to rotations so this is also really fancy because here is rotation you can play around you can almost make what we call a half bar or sorry a half a, a what do you call it a half donut chart basically it will only have the half of it and this is really nice so let's try and see if we can do something with it yes so we can put in a number and let's see if we can play around a little bit see so we can put in just number one to see what happens basically let's refresh all right so it's rotating and it will start here from a different starting point so that's the rotation so we don't need the rotation we need uh, something else even more uh, this one probably so allowed to sweep do we have more no so this is the one we need the circumference so the value of this is by default 2 times pi so let's make this instead of 2 let's make this 1 comma make sure you have a uh, column here between I will just remove the rotation because we don't need to rotate or change the level of the rotation so now you can see you can start to play around with this and you can make even a nicer thing so let's say 1.5 let's see where we're heading at so after some searching I figured out well basically the formula is if you understand it's pi so pi value is this so you can play around with that so that means if we go back here so our what do we want we want to have the half part of it so we say 3.1 that's the value right? because it is if you look at the formula it works by 2 times math pi so we need the half of it only so once we did that you will see our pi is now or our chart or half donut chart is becoming half as well so what we can do now is using the rotation you can play around with this and the rotation is well if I just calculate correctly it is close to 3.6 uh, no not 100% well it's maybe 4 where did I get the number no and then it should be 3 maybe 3.1 as well all right we're getting here very close is 3.1.6 I'm not mistaken all right so that's it so basically how that works is you have to calculate here you can see this is the minus so it's already it starts with a certain rotation level of minus 0 0.5 multiplied by math or by pi value pi value here is 3 1 4 etc etc so you just play around with it until you find it but now if you look at this and we let's remove all the other values you probably will understand we have now a very nice uh, gauche or a, a a speedometer type of chart so if we check more we're going to this and let's make this a this is a percentage cutout let's make this 80 so it will look nice again all right so now you have something really fancy and you could even if you would really want to do that you could do some uh, well, creative work to make this work at all so you can say here for example uh, green and then you make this black and others you make gray and then you remove all of these other values and once you did that you also remove all of these values here so basically what we say here is let's say this is 9 this is 1 and then this is the remaining so the black should pinpoint this number 10 basically so if you understand what we're doing here there's a speedometer of 15 of total value and we're 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 having the the meter uh, pointing on number 10 yes so let's remove all of this here as well save this refresh now you can see here it starts to work but of course it doesn't work really that nice however you can play around with it and once you play around with it you get better and better at it but this is basically how you can do more creative work with a pie chart in chart.js so if you like all of this information and you like to explore more regarding to chart.js check out the course on udemy 
Uh, I have a special Chart.js course related to this and goes deep in every aspect of Chart.js. And it's very fascinating because you will start to combine my, my SQL with Ajax and you have a dynamic chart update so you can create basically a chart with the data in your database and connect it all together to make it a real fancy dashboard. So in below you can find the link in the description you find the link of it with a special offer.